Welcome back friends. We are talking about respiration and in this future videos we will be talking about pulmonary ventilation process. We have talked about uh, how the exchange of gases actually occur, how external respiration and internal respirations are related with each other and how they are occurring simultaneously inside your body. But now we need to know the external respiration process a little bit more. That is the mechanism of how oxygen is taken. Not only oxygen, but the air is taken inside our lungs and then carbon dioxide uh, is released out of our lungs. Right? That machinery is called pulmonary ventilation involving our lungs. That's why it's termed pulmonary. Right? Now in this case, this video is going to be an overview of all of these processes. Right. Now in the pulmonary ventilation, so let me let me write it. We are going to talk about pulmonary pulmonary ventilation. Pulmonary ventilation. Now in this pulmonary ventilation process here, normally it it, it, it it is also part of respiration or respiratory system. Now in this respiratory system it can be divided into two parts. One is quiet respiration, another one is deep pulmonary respiration. Right? So let me divide it into two sections. So one is quiet and another one is deep pulmonary respiration. Now you can easily uh, distinguish between these two types of respiration. Now normally when we are uh, doing all the tasks, I say everything is fine, oxygen level in our body uh, inside our cell is fine, normal we take gentle breathing or gentle respiration. That is that's called the quiet breathing or quiet respiration process just small and this in this case our rib cages are uplifted slightly and we just take oxygen according to our need but sometimes for example let's say you just run uh, for a few kilometers and you are getting much more oxygen you require much more oxygen you're burning oxygen very fast in that case you require deep breathing in that case you need to take a more amount of oxygen this is the example of deep breathing that I've, that I've performed right now. So this is the difference between quiet and deep breathing. Now when I'm talking, I also take breath, I also take oxygen, I'm breathing also. That's called quiet breathing. You, you simply can't get that amount. But when, uh, whenever you are in stress or something, some conditions like that, you require your body deserve more oxygen, you go through this deep breathing process. Right? Now in all these processes, the whole process of breathing is associated and they are maintained due to the presence of muscles in your body. The pulmonary muscles and the diaphragm, they play the key role in these breathing processes. Right? Now muscles, among all of these muscles that are placed there, and also rib cage, your rib cage is also a very important part. So your rib cage, your muscles, muscles like intercostal muscles are very, very important, and your diaphragm. These three things are the major things that are controlling your breathing process. So I'm, uh, let me write this, those three things. Now those three things here are diaphragm, intercostal muscle, and your rib cage. is another important thing and also another type of muscles are there for deep breathing but not for, for quiet breathing these three muscles these three uh, things are important and they work just fine now what's going on here to understand how we take oxygen we release carbon dioxide how this whole machinery is working you need to understand one fundamental law and that's called the Boyle's law of pressure and volume right so let me talk about a little bit about Boyle's law so let's write it here. Boyle's law. Boyle's law of pressure and volume. Two things are there. Pressure and volume. Now what this law is suggesting is very fundamental and very basic. So let's talk about it. So let's say this is a container. This is one container. Now in this container there, there, is, a, there is a gas. Let's say these are the gas particles. Let's say five gas particles are there. Now this container is having a fixed volume, volume equals one, for example, and and pressure is also there. Pressure is two, for example. So having a particular volume and particular pressure. Now if we increase the volume of this particular container, try to understand the concept. If we increase the volume of the container, 
but but the but the type of gas and the amount of gas remains the same remind you amount of gas remains the same we just increase the volume now the volume is here twice like v equals to 2 now so the pressure that is imparted by this molecules into the wall of this vessel will be reduced or increased try to understand it now these are the gas molecules they will just go and hit onto the wall that's called the pressure right that's called the pressure imparted by this part um, gas molecules into this vessel wall that's the pressure now if we increase the volume having the same number of gas molecules that is five molecules but now the vessel is much more bigger so the pressure imparted onto the wall of this vessel will be decreased so as the volume increased the pressure imparted will be decreased if the condition is the number of molecule remains the same and that's the number is same here so here what we can see so the pressure here is decreased now pressure is decreasing right so though same same five molecules will be there but the pressure will be decreased and similarly if we if we if same number of molecules are there now volume equals to 0.5 pressure will be increased right if we if we make the container small having the same amount or same number of gas molecules the pressure they impart will increase increment of pressure this is decrement of pressure compared to this middle thing right or middle vessel that's the law of boil and that is a very very important law you're going to see which is imparted in our breathing process that's what maintains from where the air will flow and where it goes right that's everything so if you are having a low pressure area right so in any how if we can increase the volume of a vessel it will decrease in pressure so air can flow there right so so try to connect this concept from backward so if the volume if the volume is decreased somehow sorry if the volume is increased somehow not decreased if the volume is increased somehow in that case the consequence will be pressure of that area will be decreased as a result air will flow to that container right now in this case if i tell you this container here that we are talking about is nothing but our lungs and our alveoli then what is going to be the case if we can increase the volume of our lung space or area in that case the pressure inside our lungs will fall the pressure means the air pressure of course then the air will flow outside from outside inside our lungs that's the idea of breathing guys that's it nothing rocket science about it that's so easy people think that we take up uh, oxygen or air like that it's not the case we simply lift our rib cage we simply allow the space to form more volume so that the pressure drops drops and that's done and using normal machinery of natural law air will go from higher pressure which is now outside inside our uh, inside our lungs which is having lower pressure that's it because uh, inside our lungs there is there is something called the uh, intra pulmonary pressure and that particular pressure is maintained or intra alveolar pressure that intra alveolar pressure is maintained in a constant rate of equivalence of uh, uh, the uh, 75 uh, 6 mmhg or which is the natural pressure it it regulates its pressure into the natural level once uh, the volume of uh, our uh, chest cavity increases that particular pressure drops and it eventually try to get that pressure back to get that pressure back air flows inside and then the pressure back to the normal and again everything normalized so this is the way of breathing that's how breathing occurs in our body but how to increase this volume that's the major part because that's the first thing to occur for our breathing so who does this 
an increment of volume is imparted using remember I've written here three important things diaphragm intercostal muscle and ribcage all together so they are working all together to increase the volume of your chest cavity of your lung cavity and as they are increasing the volume pressure will fall air will flow from outside inside your lungs and that's called breathing right so that's it is guys that's the overview and in the future video will be talking about the details of how uh, they are increasing the volume and how air is going inside in case of quiet uh, breathing and also deep breathing we are not that much important for deep breathing we are just focusing on quiet breathing here and another thing that we know two things are going on when you are respi respiring one is taking up another one is giving away so when you are taking up air I can't say oxygen only because it's filled with many things so when you are taking up air in that case it's called inspiration process so respiration is divided into two part inspiration so respiration can be divided here one is inspiration the first process inspiration it's a different kind of inspiration though and expiration inspiration means taking up taking up air or oxygen and it is me an expiration means giving away right so these are the two things and these two things are occurring side by side one after another just like a cycle so it's it's occurring in a cyclic way with each other right so that's kind of it guys about pulmonary ventilation and the future video will be talking about inspiration and expiration in detail thank you